Hey, Shalom. Shalom, Shalom. Kwam Yashallah. Kwam Yashallah. Hope you're having a blessed night through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yashai, Bahashem Raka HaKurash, that belongs to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well and that will teach one that have taught me its truth. Hey, Yahweh Bashim Yashai, continue to be with you in spirit and truth. May you give more knowledge, wisdom, understanding, truth, sincerity, faith, and fear. Also, Shalom to the elders of the GMS Toronto camp as well. May Yahweh Bashim Yashai be with you. And continue to rule well. Kwam Yashallah and Baba Ball. Shalom to the hopeful elect. So I just want to share this with you guys tonight. Um, this is from uh, Hamilton.ca. Uh, this is their website for the city of Hamilton. And this is a government website, by the way. Um, and Hamilton is a city that is in the province of Ontario. And Ontario is in the country of Canada. Uh, that's where us brothers reside over here, GMS Toronto, the province of Ontario. And... Um, you know, the title says it all, and one scripture that comes to mind is, Never trust thine enemy, which I'm going to read that, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Um, it says here, Hamilton's Crown 19 vaccination program prioritizes black and other racialized populations, people of color ages 18 and up, in priority neighborhoods. So you know what this says. Now, I, I just compared this article to other articles on different websites and the wording is different now if you check this out here this is from rt.com and it says canadian city hamilton opens up maxine eligibility to people 18 and over in outbreak hotspots as long as they aren't white so it, it's clearly expressed here who they're targeting but when you go to the other website it's subtle. They don't let you know that they're excluding so-called white people. And white people, you're not white. Your nationality goes back to your forefather Esau. And you are called Edom. You are the nation of Edom. You are the Edomites. You are not white people. You are Edomites. So as you can see, they're not telling you who they're excluding here. So I just thought... I, you know, I just, you know, pay attention to that. A lot of these um, government websites, they're not going to tell you what they're doing. Like, they don't flat out just tell you. You actually have to read between the lines. And the government, it just means to govern the mind, to control the mind. So they want to control your mind. That's all they're about. They're not about telling you the truth. They're, they're, they're about playing sleight of hand games with you. That's what they want to do. So... Just, just take into consideration the wording here. Now, I'm not going to read the articles because um, I think you know where this is headed. Obviously, they want to, they're want they targeting the tribes and the other nations. People of color, so to speak. That's who they're targeting. They want to get rid of you. That's the plan. That's the plan. So, let's get, let's get a precept here. Matter of fact. Read Ecclesiasticus. This is uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 12. I'm going to start at 10. It says, Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusts, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. And, and you know, this guy, he may come, come off to you as him being humble and been being nice, being friendly, using all these uh, nice words. He changes his speech up. Oh, yes, we need to save you. You're the priority. Yeah, you're more at risk. We need to help you. But when you look at his track record, this guy has been nothing but a devil, um, especially when, when it comes to the relations between um, this Edomite and you tribes, man. The relations... The relations has always been bad. Has always been bad. Um, this this guy has, he has always he has always been trying to kill you and oppress you. Well, really not kill you, murder you, and um, he 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 has never had anything nice to say about you. When you look at uh, the so called white man and his track record when it comes to um, taking over this world and going into these other nations' countries. When you look at colonialism, you look at imperialism, uh, 
from from these Edomite uh, countries when they go into like Africa, India, and etc. It has always been bad. It has always been detrimental to the people of the of the, of that land. Um, the people of those lands they have never benefited from colonialism, even though this devil he'll say they have. Oh, we brought technology. We brought all this stuff. Well, when you look at the technology that he has brought forth to the to the planet Earth, it's 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 not. It's actually slowly killing the planet. And it, it, you know all these smartphones, all these televisions. It it has turned the people of of the planet Earth into narcissistic assholes. So what good has it really brought? Now I'm going to say there are some innovative things that came out of technology. But we know through the scriptures, it says Jacob is the former of all things. So it was really Jake who was behind creating all these great things, these great inventions. Okay, it was really you Israelites. So at the end of the day, this devil, he has a bad track, track record with you tribes. He has always tried to kill you. He's about eugenics. He's about genocide. He's about slavery. And he's just about keeping you down. And not making, not making you know who your power is. That's all that is. So, verse 12, it says, Set him not by thee, lest when he hath overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. And thou at the last remember my words, and be pricked wherewith. And uh, another thing I, I want to mention, when you go into the book of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, and I believe when you get to the 35th verse, it goes into how uh, the Heavenly Father himself, he says, if the stars of heaven and the ordinances that are in heaven, if they were to cease to exist, then he would have to get rid of the nation of Israel. Just briefly paraphrasing, I'll probably go get it for you to read. I'll probably get it for you so I can read it to give you a better understanding. But um, this devil, he knows that and and... That's why he's trying to measure out the heavens. He's trying to destroy the ordinances out in the heavens. He's trying to um, create all these maxines. It's really to get rid of you Israelites. So you, you're no longer in the good graces of Yahweh Bashem Yoshai. You're no longer favored and preferred by Yahweh Bashem Yoshai. And he's doing this through his pseudoscience, his, his mathematics, which really the Lord gave to him on the left-hand side to use. And he just wants to overthrow you and take your position. He wants that blessing. He wants to stay in power. That's all it's about. Verse 13. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent, or any such as come nigh wild beasts? Now, what, now, now what you should um, think about is the story of uh, Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis, which that is a real true story that actually took place on the planet Earth. And we go back to Adam. Our line goes back as Israelites. We go back to that chosen line. We go back to Adam. And Adam and Eve, man, they, they did play around with the serpent. They, they indulged themselves in the serpent's uh, philosophies and ideologies. The, the, those wines, the, that venom. And guess what? They got bitten. And you saw what took place. They ended up getting cursed and kicked out. And they ended up getting kicked out of the garden. And nobody pitied them. The Lord didn't pity you. He didn't pity them. <clears throat> Salakia, he didn't pity them. You know, he, he just, he brought down judgment. And that's why we're in the condition that we're in today. And that, that this applies now. Going, going and playing with this, this devil. He is the serpent. He is the serpent in the garden. And you don't want to play with him. So you don't want to take that little baby sword, man. You don't want to take that little baby sword because that's going to that's gonna kill you. Don't do it. And nobody's going to pity you. You only have yourself to blame. Verse 14, So one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins, who will pity? First of all, you're not supposed to be taking jabs. That's against the law. And that's a sin. You're breaking the law. And sin is transgression of the law. And nobody will pity you when you break the law, especially Yahweh Bashem Yoshai. Remember, the scripture says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. 
So the Lord, he has to judge you and he's not going to pity you. You know, he may feel sorry for you a little bit, but judgment still has to play out. He still has to bring forth that judgment. And you have to experience the pain. You have to experience the consequences and repercussions of your actions. Have to. You have to take accountability for your actions. So that's what it's about. And nobody's going to pity you, man. Nobody is. When you play with this devil, you're going to get bit. And you're going to get poisoned. You're going to get poisoned. And that's all that the, the jab is. It's just poison. Verse 15, for a while he will abide with thee, but if thou begin to fall, he will not tarry. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. Matter of fact, let me get a scripture to back that scripture up. Um, smoother than oil. I believe that's in the book of Psalms. Smoother than oil. Or butter, I believe. Yes. This is a... Uh, Psalms chapter 55, verse 21, The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. And that's a literal sword. That's the Maxine. And um, that's biological warfare. Biological warfare that he's using on you, you tribes. And that's why it says, The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. His words were softer than oil. He's telling you now that you're the priority. You're a high risk. We want to help you. But that's not true, man. He wants, to, he wants to exterminate you. You know, you have to take into consideration, man. You've been catching hell under this devil for so many hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. All you tribes. And even the nations as well. Hundreds of years you've been putting up with this guy's bullshit. And now he has just changed and said that you are the priority and now he wants to help you? Come on, man. This is Psalms chapter 55 and 21. Come on. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. And it's not just what he says. It's what he puts in legislation. Oh, we're going to give you the Crown 19 passport. Oh, we're going to track you and everything's going to be digitalized with and uh, you're going to have your records on there. It's going to be more it's going to be very beneficial for you and your family, your loved ones. Then everything can go back to normal. Those are all smooth words. And those are soft words. Those are things that you want to hear. Because people are looking for hope in the times that we're in. People are looking for hope. People are looking for solutions. So he's going to say he's going to sound sweet. It's going to sound like he has the answers. But he really doesn't. He wants to kill. He's just looking for an opportunity to murder. All right. Now, here's verse 22. This is important. Listen to this. Cast thy burden upon Yahweh, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O power, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. And we have the tools to get out of this predicament that we're in. And that's these scriptures. The solution is Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Primarily, primarily Yahweh Shai. He is our Savior. And He's going to deliver us from this, this jab and the up and coming uh, destruction. That's if we're chosen. So we, we, have a, we have a solution. We have the Lord. And we shouldn't worry. Now let me go back here. <clears throat> now it says, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 16, An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit, into a trap, into a bind. He, and, and you know what that pit is? Because a pit is really a system that's going into the MOB, because that's what this is leading up to, the MOB. I'm using that acronym. That's in the, the book of uh, Revelation, the 13th chapter, and Revelation, the 14th chapter. That's where you'll find the concept, or the or I mean the acronym of the MOB. That's what it is. If you're familiar with those uh, chapters in the book of Revelation that I've just mentioned, you understand what I'm talking about. 
And that's that pit. He wants to bring, he wants to uh, finalize and mandate this digital system. And you notice this uh, pandemic has accelerated it. And I'm going to keep mentioning it, even though if I sound like a broken record, it has accelerated it. Now, look at all the economies around the world. All these different countries, all these different societies on the planet Earth, they are all bringing in a digital ID system. They're implementing it. And it's due to the pandemic. So that's that pit. And with this uh, system, he's going to have complete control over you. All your records and documents, everything about you is going to be in a cloud, into a, in a server, on a chip, or on a, on a digitalized system. Everything you do, he'll know. Where you go, where you sleep, what you're thinking of. That's that pit. And the ones of you that, that, that abide and comply with that system, you're basically selling your soul away. You're giving this devil ownership over you. Now let me move on. He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. And it's not just about killing with this guy. He wants com complete control over you. He's a control freak. All the things I just mentioned about, like if you turn on, with this digital system, every time that you buy something or you do something, it's going to be a transaction now. Every time you turn on the tap, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show how much water you use and then you're going to be billed for it. Every time you flick on a light, you'll be billed for that. We're going into a new system. And it's total slavery. Total slavery. He doesn't want your blood. He wants your soul, man. Verse 17. If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. Yeah, and adversity, guess what? The whole world is experiencing adversity. And who's there to solve the problem? The so-called white man. He's the one with all the solutions, right? You got uh, um, these people that um, the international bankers have set up, like Bill Gates, Doug Fraud, all these guys, uh, Joe Biden. They all, they all have these solutions, right? They're here to save you and take you out of this adversity that you're going through. They have all the answers. So that's what it's talking about. He will always be there first to make it seem like he's helping you. But really, he's there to stab you in the back, man. And though he pretend to help thee, yet shall he undermine thee. Yeah, and he undermines you. And he undermines you spiritually, mentally, and physically. And your intelligence as well. He insults your intelligence. He's telling you to, he, to put on a face mask. But obviously it's not working. He puts you in all these lockdowns. It's not working. And then all your so-called rights are being taken away. He undermines you. Treats you like he treats you worse than children. <laughs> treats you worse than fucking children. And that's a damn shame. And you people still haven't awoken to that. A majority, like a lot of you people, you know it's wrong, but what are you doing to solve the, the, the problem? What are you doing? I'm talking, I'm talking about you regular people out there. I'm not talking about people in the truth or brothers and sisters that are in the truth. That's different. I'm talking about you people out in the world. What are you doing? You know something's wrong, but what are you doing? Anyway, verse 18, he will shake his head and clap his hands and whisper much and change his countenance. Yeah, and he will. Like uh, Doug Fraud, the premier of Ontario, what did he do? He came up with an apology and he apologized for all uh, the lockdowns and all the things that um, the people of Ontario have been going through during this whole uh, so-called crisis. And um, he gave an, he gave all you saw was crocodile tears. All you saw was was crocodile tears. So that shows you he changed his countenance. First, he, first in the beginning he was stern. Then he's crying. Now he's serious. People are asking for what about the the paid sick days? He doesn't want to give an answer for that. So th this devil man, he, he, he you know there's an agenda behind it, 
and he doesn't have your best interests. So anyways, that's all that I got. Um, just want to give all praises, glory, and honor. Do unto Yahweh, Bashem Yoshai, Bahashem Rakahakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect. Kwam Yasha Allah, Ababa Baal, Shalom.